for a second there. I thought I was going to be laying on the floor there, and I won't be able to speak. <laughs> you guys will be in trouble. But the, God's in the house, isn't he? Actually, he's in each and every one of us, this Holy Spirit. So uh, well, thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Frank Marcy. I'm from Mechanicsburg area. And I have uh, some prophetic messages the Lord gave me over the, gave me over the last couple of years. And basically, it's a warning for America and the church. I'm not sure what you want to call it, but he gave me two visions. One was a picture of a Statue of Liberty. I'll speak on that about 10 to 15 minutes. And a picture of a lighthouse. And I'll speak about the remaining time, like a half hour, on that. And uh, since I had those visions four years ago, boy, it has come to pass. But it's a vision that's not going to stop. It's going to continue till the Lord fulfills his word completely. Amen? Amen. Well, anyways, the first vision I had was uh, almost four years ago in the wintertime. It was a picture of a Statue of Liberty, and I'll let my wife pass this around, and you can look at it. And it's a picture of Statue of Liberty. It was totally filled up with snow to the top of the forehead. And uh, all I saw was the top of her head and her hand sticking out of snow with the torch. And it was just a quick vision. And instantly the Lord gave me uh, some scriptures on that and interpretation. And actually it was a warning to America. <coughs> the reason you only saw a short, just the top of her forehead, top of her head because America has a short time to repent. A short time. Now this is almost four years ago. I think we have less time now. And if you hear have ears to hear hear what the prophetic voices are saying, they're saying the same thing. So there should be nothing new. Uh, it's the first my time for me speaking to you about it. That's a confirmation, assurance not to fall asleep again. Hit the snooze button. It's time to awake and arise and go. Where it's God called you to go. Amen. It's not a time to slumber. It's not a time. Oh, it's no long time from now. Like it says in Ezekiel 25, we heard this before. No, now, knowing the times, now is high time to awake and to arise because our salvation is nearer than we first believed. Romans 13, 11. Very prophetic. Now's the time, now, to wake and to rise. To do what God's called us to do. We had so many prophetic words. How many more prophetic words do we need? Honestly, it's time to activate what God's called in your life. Amen? So, we have very little time to repent. Who, who's to repent? Really, it's the church. How the church goes is how the nation goes. Amen? So, that's very important. I said, Lord, what about all the snow? What's all the snow? What's all the snow? Well, over time, over time, the hearts of people have grown cold towards the Lord and towards one another. And we're filled up to hear. His timing is very soon. It's the two greatest commandments, loving the Lord and loving one another. We know we're in the times. We know we're in the end times, end of age. We really say we love our brother. Then why aren't we out there telling them the good news? It's good news. Warning them in love. Crying out for their souls. Praying for them. Being kind to them. Instead of a harsh condemning finger. Bring them in. The harvest is so ripe. This house will be packed to the gills. I mean, it will be so much. What's the Holy Spirit doing at this time? Nowhere are we going to point to man, ministries, um, churches, methods. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit of the Lord's coming. Whew, and he's going to do it. And get ready. It's happening. It, it's happening already. But it's only the very tip, the very start of it. And be prepared. Because you're going to see all walks of life coming in these doors. And other doors. And not just here, but all throughout the United States. There's going to be pockets of fires. 
So, we, but we have time to repent and prepare the way of the Lord. First, we, what are we preparing? Ourselves. First. You know, look at ourselves. Examine ourselves. That's what we want to do. Examine ourselves. And then we want to spend time with the Lord. Because we can't go out there and do things on our own anymore. We need the Holy Spirit's guidance and power and authority. Amen? And he said he has given to us. But submit to God, resist the devil, then they will flee. Amen? So then the, um, so the hearts of many have grown cold. So well, every time you have vision, the dream should always back it up with Scripture. Always, always, always back it up with his word. And um, I'll find it here in a second here. Matthew 24, 11 through 13. This is talking about the end times. Many false prophets. I'll stop right there. They're already out and about. Many false prophets. I just heard one just last week at a local church. It's totally out of context. Uh, Well-known church. I'm not going to mention names. I couldn't believe they didn't kick him out. Unbiblical. But anyways, many false prophets. They're not deceived. Jesus keeps warning you over and over again in the Matthew 24. About false prophets and teachers, it shall deceive many. And because lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. There was that snow over the years. The hearts of many have grown cold. Amen. Can you testify that? And it says, uh, <coughs> times are getting darker and darker. Gross darkness on the people. In Isaiah 60. So other people teaching things get brighter and brighter and brighter, and then we all get to heaven, and glory, hallelujah. And it's not that the way it is. Okay. So then the last thing in the picture was the torch sticking out. Okay. And, of course, the scripture for that in Revelation. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, very familiar. Remember where you have fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come quickly, and will remove the lampstick out of this place, unless you repent. Unless you repent. You don't hear much preaching about that anymore, repenting, uh, repentance. Um, but every revival, every great awakening, if you look, studying the word of God and the past history the last hundred of years ago and this past century is always repentance always repentance and repentance is not just saying Lord I'm sorry and we've done that and have great uh, assemblies together and meetings and um, and then go back to our own ways again well, we did that. America is so used to instantaneous things, quick responses. God's no hurry. He's no hurry. He's waiting to see if we really did repent. If we're really sorry and grieved that we offended him and offended one another. And how you do it is backing up with your action. So he's verbally and in action. Amen. So we got to back it up and prove it. And who knows? It's a Lord's timetable that when the revival will come and awakening, but he's just waiting to see. If you all come together in unity and agreement and repent and stand fast, and thank you, Lord. It might happen instantly, which is rare, but it can. Or it takes time. The Lord's going to test us, our true hearts. In fact, I think he's given us so much grace time already with all the warnings. Hasn't he not? Yes, he has. And are we any better since 9-11, since Katrina, the oil disasters, and all the wars and rumors of wars? Have we gotten any better as America as a whole, the church? No, it's be honest. So that's why the time's short. Out of his great love, he's coming for his bride. But he wants all. Holy bride, without spot and wrinkle. I'm not saying perfect, but a holy bride, living in his righteousness and pressing on to the mark of the high calling. Amen? 
no matter what stage you're at in your life. I don't care if it's six months or 60 years walking with the Lord. He's calling us all in. Therefore, faithful. Faithful to him and his word. Amen. So really, that's just a brief description of the Statue of Liberty. And you know what? I had that vision. The very next day when it woke up, God confirmed it in the natural. That's when that big blizzard came coming, shooting up through the East Coast, up to Pennsylvania, and right to New York City. Remember we had a 20, 24 inches of snow a few years ago? That was the very next day after he gave me that vision. I knew nothing about the storm, but he confirmed it. Amen? <clears throat> so the next vision I had was just actually a couple, week, was a couple weeks later. Sorry, I'm not real used to own this. Oh, I'm messing up the recording back there. Um, was the... Uh, now my wife stand up and hold that up there for me, since I'm limited here. This is sort of somewhat the picture I saw, a vision of a lighthouse. Now I didn't realize there was something out there. But the lighthouse I saw, instead of being bright out, it was very dark. Storms, lightning, huge waves. And I saw it coming in different waves. It was escalating, escalating. I think where we're at right now is that middle picture of all the storms we've been coming in. But a bigger one's coming yet. And the lighthouse is a representation of Jesus Christ. And um, after he showed that to me, he just showed me tons of scripture about that lighthouse. And uh, it was a great revelation for me. And really, maybe two things. The lighthouse is a shelter from the storm. And the other reason is, it's a light in the darkness. Who wants to be that light in the darkness? Hallelujah. Who wants that shelter from the storm? Yes, we need that too. Because when the storms come, enemy comes, we should not fear but faith. And what do we have to do? Run into that lighthouse, into his safety, his security, his protection. We step out of that, we're going to sink. We're going to run into trouble. But when we're in Christ, in Jesus, in that lighthouse, we are safe. Amen? Amen. And I'll get into some scriptures uh, backing that up about being a shelter from the storm. Psalm 91, 2 says, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him, I will trust. I will say, Lord, he is my refuge, my fortune, my God. In him I will trust. Proverbs 18.10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. There's that lighthouse again. Strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are what? Safe. So you run into the arms of Jesus, you are safe. He loves you that much. Yeah, these things we're speaking to you might be fearful and it, or it might be, uh, well, God wouldn't do that. Well, the reason he tells you these things are happening is because he loves you. He wants to protect you. How much do you go out of your way to protect your children? Well, he does it much more. He cares about us, just faithful children. Amen? To protect them. So that's wonderful. Psalm 61.3 says, Lord, you have been a shelter for me and a strong tower. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for the sake of time, I'm going to just make this a little shorter message. But um, in that lighthouse, all lighthouses, they stand through the test of time. It's amazing. These lighthouses are hundreds of years old, and they're still standing. Even with all the weather, all the weather that's been happening over the years and storms, and they're still standing. And that's scriptural, too. When you go through those battles, stand. Stand on his word and keep on standing. Amen? Amen. So things are happening quickly. Uh, quickly. Um, Isaiah 25, 4, for those who like to write down things, I encourage you to write these scriptures down and meditate on them, read them, because you're, you're filling up your lampstand. So when these times come, you won't be lost. You meditate on the word, and these words will come back to life to you. 
and will encourage you because it's the word of God. There's power in his word. There's authority in his word. Okay? For you have been a strength to the poor, strength to the needy in distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, the blast from the ter terrible ones as a storm against the wall. And that's what you see. The storm keeps hitting up against the wall, and it's escalating and escalating and escalating. Amen. Amen. This is uh, one of my favorite scriptures. A lot of twos. Second Samuel 22, 2 Samuel 22.2. 2 Samuel 22.2 through 4. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, the God of my rock. In him I will trust. There we go again about trusting the Lord. He is my shield, the horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my refuge. Doesn't that sound just like that lighthouse? My Savior, he has saved me from the violence. Thank you, Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so I shall be saved from my enemies. Praise the Lord. That is good news. That is good news. You know, we read the, we read the Bible and stuff. We read about the battles that God's saints went through. Yeah, there's battles. But we there was victory and a price to pay in those battles. Amen. And of course, um, Matthew seven twenty four through twenty seven, very familiar. I'll just summarize it. It's about building your house upon the rock, versus the sand. Well, all lighthouses are built upon the rock, and spiritually, that's the rock of Jesus. All houses sink in sand. So the winds and storms come, it's going to fail. You don't build your foundation on Jesus, and trust Him. And you shall stand and keep on standing. Amen? Amen. I like Revelation 3.10. It's awesome. Revelation 3.10. Those who have kept my command to persevere. So don't quit. Don't give up. Persevere. Okay? I, Jesus is speaking, also will keep you from the hour of trial that will come upon the whole earth. Wow, that's a good one. Is that security there, knowing that he's going to keep us from the hour of trial? I think and not just a great tribulation, but that's what I'm, I'm promising on. God's promise, I'm just keeping that. Lord, you're going to protect me. You know, and I think I'm going to be part maybe the rapture. It'll be the rapture. Because he will not here to face his wrath. It'll be poured out. He's going to snatch us up. Amen. But I, um, I'm not going to talk much about that. I don't think it's going to be the pre-trip personally. I think it's going to be in the middle or possibly towards the end. But the final thing is going to keep us safe from the hour of trial. That's uh, Revelation 3.10. And it also says at the end, to test those who dwell on the earth. So that's that testing. He's going to, it's going to be that testing. And of course, another very familiar one. When the enemy comes in like a flood, just like that vision, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him, the enemy. Amen? So the Spirit will come in like a flood and rise up. So it's time, like, doing these meetings like this, you're filling yourself up with the Holy Spirit. So when the hour of trial comes, and these storms come, you can face it and stand it because you've built your life on the rock. And you're filled up with a lampstand of oil of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. So, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about the light. We talked about going into the lighthouse and being safe and protection. But we don't do that out of fear, but out of faith. That's what he wants us to do. Come to him, to be in him. But we're not just supposed to stay there. He always wants us to be engaged in life. So that's what the part of light is all about, the light. Be children of the light. It will protect us from the storms, but we'll be a light in that darkness. Amen? Amen. 
What is that light? It's his presence. It's his glory. It's emanating out. And the more you spend time with him, the more that glory will be on you. Just like when Moses came down to Mount Sinai, it was just shining on him and shining. The glory was on. In fact, man couldn't handle it. They had to come over and cover him up right away. But isn't that what men do? I'm talking about mankind. Right away, we can't handle it. We want to cover it up. But this next glory that's coming, man's not going to be able to get in the way of God. God's going to have his way. We're not going to be, we might try to cover it up. We might run and try to hide like Jonah, but God's going to have his way. Amen. Why? Because he said so. We know the ending already, but we always want to jump to the end. That'd be great, but it's not biblical. We have to go through these things. Amen. And his promise says he will get us through these things. Amen. The light in the lighthouse is used for several things. Through the storms, like I said, to bring the ships to safety or tell me stay still. It's also used during the fog. There's a, there's a fog. And also used during the nighttime. It's obvious. When night represents darkness, we can shine a light in this darkness. The darker it is, the brighter we shine if we're prepared and, and filled with them. Amen? This is great news. Very encouraging. His words are power. His words are authority. Believe that. It will not come back void. We speak them in faith. Amen. The fog represents, you know, people walking around confused, can't see where they're going, don't know where to go. They're searching. They're looking for answers. They're looking for a savior. We have the light of Jesus in us to guide them in safely and show them the truth. They're searching, going, chasing after wrong gods and other spiritual unclean things. But once they taste and see that the Lord is good and receive his presence, nothing can stand in God's way. And he's drawing them in. Amen. i uh, read uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 through 9. It's a little longer one here. For when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that they overtake you as a thief, but you are all children of the light. The children of the day, we are not of night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. As I started this conversation today, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. That means self-control. For as they sleep, sleep in the night, and they trust and got drunk, and they're drunk in the night. But let us, who are the day, be sober, putting on a breastplate of faith and love, and helmet of a hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation for our Lord Jesus Christ. There's another powerful scripture, especially the last verse, verse 9. God has not appointed us to his wrath. That's peace and safety, knowing that he's not, we're not going to go with these the great tribulation or terrible things. It's his word. It's his promise. Amen. Amen. So we got to abide in the Lord. Spend time with him. Amen. John 16, 33 says, in me, you might have peace. In the world, you have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. And I'm going to read uh, Isaiah 60, 1 and 2 again. Arise and shine. So we 
wake up out of slumber, we're going to arise and shine. Go, where the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Just like it was on Moses, just like it was on Jesus. It drew people to him. They saw the light on him. They didn't know what it was, but something special about that person. My wife and I experienced that many times in our travels, ministering up and down the coast. Spend time with the Lord. People, complete strangers, walk up to us out of nowhere, and for no reason, they just were drawn to us. We knew what it was, and we ministered to them, prayed for them. Next thing you know, prophetic words are flown. They're crying, they're repenting, and you know, how do they know this? It was a divine appointment. And God met them. It was awesome. So we spent time. The people will see the glory in you. And sometimes you might see it in one another. When someone spends a lot of time with the Lord, you'll see it on them. It is glowing in the crowd. Even out in the marketplace, you can pick them out. Amen. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness upon the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Wow, just like I was saying. They will see the glory of the Lord upon you. Who wants to see that glory on you? You've got to spend time with him. Your heart's got to be right. And you'll see it. Amen? My voice is starting to crack. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In Matthew 28, 19, 20, it says, Go you. It's not just the pastor of the church. Not just the prophet or the apostle or the teacher. You go and teach all nations. All nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to do, to observe all things, whatever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. He's with you always. He's with you always. He loves you that much. He holds you in the palm of his hand. In the palm of his hand. Thank you. The Lord showed me something in the scripture the other day. Isaiah 49. It says, the Lord will not forget you. He inscribed you in the palm of his hand. Wow. Have you ever write things in your hand and you had nothing to write on, so you want to write? Yeah. I know some people did. You might know someone who did. Um, I used to do it in high school, my cheat sheet, you know, A, B, D, D, C. But uh, that was before Christ in my days. But um, I just realized Jesus does that too. Wow. Not because he's forgetful. He's doing it to show you. That you're so precious. He loves you that much. He holds you with his righteous right hand. He's holding on to you. He loves you that much. Wow. I wonder how my brother Fred's doing down there, you know. And I just love Fred. I love him that much. Or Martha. Anyone down there. Their hands are written in his, hand, his hands. Their names are written in their, his hands. That's something special. It's like having your picture on his refrigerator or picture in the wallet. I think it's even better because it's something personal, something close. He can hold on to you. And um, it's awesome. And he says also, no one can pluck you out of the palms of my hand. Isn't that cool? So your name's there. He's holding on to you. No one's going to pluck you out. He's the one's father you have given me. I'm holding on to them. Amen. And nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of our Lord Jesus and Father God. Nothing. So when you go through these trials and tribulations, remember, nothing can separate you. He's there. He's fighting the battle with you. Amen. He's there. He's your defender. He's also your uh, avenger. He goes after. Okay. Thank you. Deuteronomy 4, 29 through 31 says, 
You will seek the Lord with your Lord your God, and you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. And when you're in distress, all these things shall come upon you in the latter days. When you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice. The Lord God is merciful. He's a merciful God. He will not forsake you nor destroy you, nor forget his covenant that he swore to his fathers, to your fathers. He will not break his promises. He will not break his covenant. It's impossible. If there's anything broken, it's, it's our part. We break the covenant. We walk away. We're not faithful, you know. And then we got to come back again and repent. Thank God we have second chances, third chances. But as long as we get back up, a righteous man gets back up how many times? Seven times, that's right. You know, Peter gets a bad rap a lot of times. But I like his faith, his boldness. At least he stepped out of the boat. All the ones were too fearful or hoping they did something like that. You know? And many other instances. But when he fixed his eyes on Jesus, even amidst the storm, like you see the picture there, even amidst that storm, he fixed our eyes on him. Actually, we'll be able to walk on water. We'll see many miracles, healings, salvations, signs and wonders flow when you're in him and fix your eyes on him, even in the darkness. In fact, I think it's God's specialty. He likes to do it in the darkness. Amen. Even that's what Jesus did. He spent time with the sinners in the darkness. Yeah, he, pre he preached in the synagogues a lot, but he went into the world. We're in this world. We're not of it, but we've got to be in the world. I think the church has fallen asleep that we've been too much church things over the, the decades here. And the world kept getting darker and darker. And actually, we brought a lot of world, worldly things into the church. Instead of church going into the world, impacting the world. We've dropped the ball. We dropped the ball. But thank God he's warning his people. He wants to prepare us. Amen. And help us and be there for us. And I thank God for the prophets that are speaking up and the watchmen sounding an alarm. Not all of them. That's why Jesus said about be alert and watch. There's many false teachers and prophets out there. Those that still continue tickling the ears. Teach us good things, smooth things, like it says in Jeremiah. And it says people like to have it so. Oh, my. I said, how could that be? Now, I've read that you know, years ago. But I've seen it self-fulfilling prophecy today, though. I see that. People flock to these people. And there's policing them for the money or recognition and stuff. And. Because they like to hear all these good things. And the churches won't allow the woes that speak the true word, the whole word, and nothing but the word. Even the warnings. Even repentance. Even talking about sin and hell. We want to run so far from fire and brimstone in combination to so much the other side. Now I think we left a wrong impression that uh, everybody's going to heaven. Everything's going to be okay. I just wonder what's going to happen when these storms come to these people. You look at the pastor, because that's what they look up to, or the prophets. I thought you said they weren't ready and prepared. All these wonderful things are happen. Yeah, there's going to be some wonderful things happening. But somehow they, well, maybe it's not in their Bible. They ripped out those pages or something. The things that Jesus spoke about. And Paul and Daniel, and John, the revelator. They, they ripped out those pages. And what the Bible says, do not delete anything out of this word. That's just not literally, not writing them down, but also not preaching them. I believe it means the same thing. Not te All their lives are talking about the same thing. Oh, you can go to church 
10 years later, still teaching and preaching the same thing. So just guard your eyes and ears. And when you spend time with the Lord, you get the Holy Spirit prompting in you. Uh oh, there's a little red flag check there. Something's not right with this minister or with this brother or sister. You got to know the truth. That's why you have to know this word inside and out and upside down with the help of the Holy Spirit. So it's not out of context. Many times I hear scriptures speaking to be one verse, but we'll leave out the, far, the end of it. Because once again, they're picking and choosing what they want to trying to conform God to their image and their faith and their likeness of what they want to preach. So letting God show you how we should be conformed to his likeness and image. Amen. 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 And one thing about the lighthouse, and I'll wrap it up with this, is uh, in that lighthouse, you can't really see out another picture. There's only, only one door in that lighthouse down at the base. And there's only one door, one gate. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the light. No one else can come to the Father except through me. There's only one way to go in. Just like Noah and the ark, there's one main door there to be entered in. And during that storm, you can't see it in this picture, but in the other picture, there's a guy standing at the door, and the door's wide open, even when there's big, huge waves crashing around it. And it's really enveloped him. He still has the door wide open. And the man's just standing there like this. Wow. I think it's a reputation of Jesus. But don't bother him. He said, peace be still to the storms. He's an experienced fisherman. They, they're familiar with storms. Even they were scared. The door is open to you out there. Every one of you. And the Lord is open to those. He, God wants to use you to your family, to your neighbors, to your co-workers, to the marketplace, wherever you go. And... I have another message later, but it's going, be, it's going to be like a Jonah generation rising up. Many are running away, but God's going to draw them back again out of, into the world. A great evangelistic message to the people out there. And yes, not just our loved ones. He's going to stretch us and have us reach the lost, the sinners out there with such love. And it's happening already. I've seen many, many people rise up and going out there. It's only this is part of it. It's a part of it. Do we really really say we love our brother? Then we would go out there and reach him. Because if you really know what hell is all about, if you had a divine revelation of hell, knowing what's going to happen, we want any brother or sister to go there. And not only that, what a wonderful, splendid life you can have in heaven to be in his glory. To be with him, the, our creator, and he lives inside us now. And he's just waiting to look down at the balconies of heaven. He says, where's my children? Go rise up. Where's the Joshua's and the Daniel's and the Elijah's? Where is the David's and the Deborah's? Where are they? And then he said, I can't do it. That's okay. Gideon said the same thing. He can use what you have. Because after all, it's all about him. It's his power and his might, his authority, his glory. He wants to use you where you're at. He will give you the words to speak truth into people's lives. If we have our spiritual eyes and ears open, he'll be able to tell you what's in the depths of the people's hearts. He'll reveal it to you. Time is short, folks. Church, time is short. Wake up. Arise and go and warn the people. And the power of love, the power of his word, and the power of his spirit. So I praise God for warning us. I praise him to let us know what the future is going to be like. But you know what? It's a wonderful future when you're in him. Because you're filled with him. And you're going to see many miracles and healings take place. And people coming into the kingdom. And Jesus said many times, 
when there was healings and miracles, what did he say? Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. And he went one step further, and I'll leave you with this. He says, Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Thank you. So we'd like to uh, pray for you this morning if you need a touch of the Lord. And I know that uh, Danny Montez, Pastor Danny Montez and Sita, they're getting ready to leave. They've been, they traveled with my wife and I. Uh, we worked together back 20 years ago. And uh, Pastor Danny actually is an apostle. They have 85 churches. But Danny and your wife, will you come forward? Can we pray for you? And we just want to send you forth. And if you'd like to come forward and pray with us, you can do that. God's creating divine connections with the body, the bones coming together, the body coming together. So I just thank God for this couple and their commitment and their dedication. Their whole family serves God. Their uh, father was a tremendous apostle, Risa Montez. And then I've worked personally with his two other brothers, Hurley and Jonathan. And uh, so we just thank God for this couple. So Frank, will you pray for this couple? Just hold hands. There you go. Father, just go ahead and pray for them, brother. Thank you for your wonderful servants. I thank you, Lord God, they have been obedient. And I thank you they love you with all the heart, mind, soul, and strength. And when they do that, they will find you. That you're with them every step of the way. That, Lord, when fear and doubt tries to creep in, Lord God, I ask that you regard them and infuse them with your Holy Spirit. They will rise up like rivers of living waters. That they want to have time to dwell on anything that the enemy throws at them. They just submit to you, and he will flee. I speak right now in Jesus' name, that when you go to the highways and byways, that you will compel them to come into the house, and your house shall be full. It shall be full. Because young daughter, young son, I'm pleased and thankful that you answered my call. And I th ask you, continue seeking me, and I'm going to reveal more things to you. Yes, deep things that are hidden for now will be revealed in the future. Things that are prophetic, things that have such wisdom that they know that you spent time with me. And it will wake people up. It will convict their hearts. And they will know the true God. They will know me, says the Lord. So go forth and stand upright. I'm your Jehovah Jireh. I will provide for all your needs. Don't worry about the finances. No stress, but I shall give you rest. No worry, I shall give you faith. And know that you know it will come. I will provide those who are faithful. Just thank you, my faithful servants. Thank you both as you love one another and as you love me. I will bless those. And you will have favor more than others because you laid your life down for me. And I will go forth and open more doors than you ever seen before. In Jesus' name. I ask you to keep them in health, Lord. Yeah. Keep them in health physically and mentally, Lord. Guard their minds, Lord. Put a shield around them, Lord, a hedge. Yeah. Ministering angels and guardian angels around them, Lord. In fact, I ask for more angels around them, Lord. As we go into this darker world, Lord, get more angels around them, Lord. More of you, Lord, welling up in them. That light shining brighter and brighter. That when we go from glory to glory, it's time for that go to that next glory level. Yes, that next glory level. Thank God that we all have the glory already. But he's taking us to that next glory level. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, Lord. We just send them forth in love and your grace and your goodness.
Thank you, Lord, that you reconnected us. And Lord, we thank you for the harvest, the harvest of souls. Thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to become a partaker of the labor they're involved in. In Jesus' name.